Now, full test. Let's go. Go on, get down, and we can, if I can get a lock, I can actually use the missiles. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome back to the epilogue of Let's Play Starfield. I'm Simford Dustbunny, and we are here on our ship. We're actually at the Stroud Exxon facility, and, uh, for the first part of our little epilogue, we are going to have to destroy some ships because I need my grade C piloting. So, with that in mind, we've picked up a couple of quests and we're going to get to some ship destruction. Okay, straight away we are in straight on to a, the Crimson Fleet Wreath. Right? Sorry, Crimson F Fleet Right. I can see this. I can see this. It's fine. Yes, the shields are down. Yes, but can we please Direct press the, the right button to destroy them? Direct it to our ground drive as well. Nope, wrong button. There we go, uh, 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 let's, oh god, it's all going wrong. Okay, however, that went right. So, that is one ship down, and we picked up some materials to go with it. However, we need to go straight on to another one. Alright, let's get straight in. Looks like we've got a couple of ships here. How are you missing me? Or how am I missing that? Let's be better English about this. Yes, one down, and this is a level four as well, so this should be pretty easy pickings. Okay, let's take those bits, and we're up to 23 out of the 30 we need to have killed. And we're going to have to go pick up some more quests to blow up some more. And our next target is dead ahead. And again, kindly, our systems have all switched back to being what they're not supposed to be. Which I do ever so much love. Because it does it whenever I jump back in, jump into a new area. So, so uh, For a second there I could have boarded that ship. But it wasn't to be. Never mind. Right, we're straight in again. There's a few here this time. Nice. They at, just le lost their grab drive. at least this time my stuff didn't reset as I jumped, which was is a reasonable start. Right, let's boost towards this guy and wipe him out. And then we can flip around and take the next one out. Hopefully before he gets too much on our shield. At least fairly low level, so that's not too bad. Has it? Which enemy shield generator? This guy? This guy's going down too. Oh, engines. engines, let's dock. I'm going to try and take this one down and board it. Even though I don't actually need to. Um, part of my character's new yeah, vigilante stance. Is corners to or hiding spots. Basically they know take out spacers and all sorts. Oh, hello, Xeno Warfare Tech. That I am not against taking. Oh, Andresia. You do keep telling me this. You mind? That guy's down. The guy is still up. Okay. There you go. Thank you. And anything else? I'll grab your stuff. And we will probably blow up the ship anyway. Just because I don't know if it counts after I've done this. Blowing up the ship. But I'm going to do it anyway. Unless it's really worth a bunch. Oh look, gravity's back on. So I will assume it does say category C. 
So I'm assuming this is a C-class vessel. Let's have a look at it. Oh, it is a crapogram vessel. And yet another one. We're going to take down this right as quickly as possible. We only need two more kills. And we're there at sea type ships. Not going to bother with that one. And that is level 45 for us as well, which is excellent. Doesn't hurt to have an extra skill point available if we should need it. Oh, holy crap. We've got a Starborn while we're, while we're going through. In fact, we got a couple. Oh, we got several. We've got several Starborn Guardians here which actually could be a little more than we bargained for. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, let's get rid of that one. Alright, and let's see if we can take the next one out, because while Andresia is telling Barrett knock-knock jokes in the background, we're getting shot up a bit. Their engines are down. We are getting shot though. Oh hell, we are actually toast. Okay, let's give this another go. Sadly, I think we started firing a bit early there, which has juiced down our power on our uh, shields. Come on. Alright, that's... Um, yeah, they're going in for the same joke again. Okay. Let's uh, see if we can take this last one down. This one's down. Yep. Now, our shields are still holding. Let's try and get some movement in. And that will help us lose the lock from the other one. His engines are down. Easy peasy indeed, actually. That went very well this time. I think the game took pity on us and only gave us two this time. Or well, the other one bugged out early after I uh, rubbed its shields down. But still, that's not bad. That's actually got us to where we need to go, but we might as well complete the quest while we're at it. Okay, there's actually several Crimson Fleet here. A few more than I expected. So that's not great. Ooh, this could be painful. This could be painful. We're straight in the toast. So, I mean, as someone who's very keen on getting rid of pirates, um, you can see that our ship's not really up to snuff, really because it's more of a cargo ship than it is supposed to be a fighter ship. What we really need is a ship for fighting. And I think we can build ourselves one, but... For that, like I say, I want the level C just really so it can be fully upgraded later on if need be. And I know that is exactly as I uh, want it to be. Let's uh, use one of my various um, parts here to make the most of that. Okay, so we're back at the Stroud Eklund facility, and the first thing I'm going to do is unlock our new piloting rank. Thank you very much. That's perfect. And then we're going to speak to this gentleman nice to right here. Again. How can I help? And Let's he get you is up. going to get me set up by letting me switch this to my main ship, and we'll give him a give it a try for a bit. But ultimately, this is not where we're going. I just want to actually have a go at flying this. But I don't think this is going to be our final ship. This may well be our sort of fun flagship. <gasps> but you seem to be able to uh, fall down to it, which kind of sucks. Uh, Barrett, do you mind? Barrett, Barrett, get out of the way, my man. Barrett, move. Can I die you or something? 
So, yeah, I like this ship, but it's not going to be our main ship. We keep looking around and there have been a few hints on screen as to where my character really wants to go with his life. He's been spending his time in Constellation, he's now a bit of a superhero. Locks, there are fresh, still the Starborn dry. around, All so he go, does Cap. feel the need that he needs to keep protecting the artifacts. But I still want to be around for Sona, and I think that's going to be one of his goals, and at the same time, he wants to do good for the universe as a whole with his superhero powers. So we're going to modify a very particular ship to be our new gunship of choice. And you'll see very shortly what ship that is. So here we are in New Homestead, our Kepler R is sat there, but we're going to be talking to this guy. Trade authorities always buying. Kiosk right here for you. And we're going to be modifying the ship. But not this ship. We're going to be modifying this ship. Because in our new desire for our new life, we're deciding we are going to take up a bit of the mantle of the Mantis. We keep seeing the outfit of the Mantis there at the... If, if you look, you keep seeing it flash up on my cargo inventory and that's been weighing on our mind a bit as it seems to be telling us that there's something we should be doing there's a job for us to do and that job is get rid of pirates and to do that we're feeling like the man being the mantis is possibly the way to go so I'm just rearranging this around and then we need to get ourselves a cockpit. This cockpit. The nice cockpit. The one everybody likes. But we have to get this to actually line up. So if you don't mind, will you please line up? Um, please? Okay. I'm going to try and get this fixed. I might need to put a intermediary in or something to get this to work because at the moment obviously it's not going to work like that so I will tweak this around and we'll get that cockpit on so and now we've moved on because next up we have to go to Hope Tech Need some work done? yes sir hey, what can I do for you okay no problem we'd like to modify my ship yet again as funky as my ship now looks Oh yes, it looks beautiful. From here, we need to get a couple of useful items. I mean, we can get some good reactors, particularly like the shear flow. And ultimately, we will be getting the shear flow. Should we be able to do it, we might have to have a check in a bit whether that's possible. Um, so the shear flow we are going to want for sure. At the moment it's not the best reactor money can buy later on. There is a shear flow 40 but we are just not high enough level for that. Grav drive wise again we'll be going for the best grav drive we can get. At the moment, that will be, I believe, the J-50. Um, though the Apollo seems to have the same, but with less mass. So I'd be very tempted to go for that one. So we'll plonk that one on there. Nice and beautiful. At the moment, we're going to have some errors, which we'll have to sort out shortly mainly of which will be it won't like the fact that we've got multiple reactors and multiple grav drives but we can fix all of this the other thing we really need is some st structural comp 
components, I believe it comes under. We need some Hope Tech uh, hallways is what we're really looking for, it says. So we need to find those Hope Tech hallways. Where are you? So let's have a look here under Habs. Yes, these. We want at least one of these. Can't remember if we require two. So I'm probably going to get two. I think we only need one. Um, because I've only done this build once on another character. So I am going to get... Now I'm going to get just the one for now. And then hopefully we'll be fine. I might have to double check on my other character how my build went. Because this is a build I worked on for quite a bit. It took me quite a while. I have borrowed a few ideas from other builds, I won't lie. Um, but it's, you know, ultimately the actual final layout was as I chose it to be. So that one will have to go as well. And that leaves us with one error, which is that ship has unattached modules. Does it? Does it really? What's our unattached module? So I'm going to fix this unattached module and then we'll go from there. Okay, so it turns out I do need the extra Habtech, Hope Tech spine. So we'll be grabbing that because I won't be able to get that at a outpost modification center, which is where we'll be going shortly to do the main modifications. I also want to just see, because I think this is a product of, no, I can still get them. So many people have told me this is a product of the results of my quest that you wouldn't be able to get the Slayton engines. This is not strictly true. As you can see, you can get the Slayton engines the really cool ones actually relatively easily at Hope Tech even if you kill Slayton but we will need some of these I doubt I'm going to be putting these on now I might see if I can put one on uh, we might just tweak this around for example we'll put this one here and we might see if we can get one or two of them on the ship at this stage without it being too heavy. Because I don't want to have to start buying landing gear and stuff like that at this point in time. But we could definitely do with at least one of those engines, possibly two. Yes, see it's too heavy right now. So we might have to come back for these at a later date just purely because when I start arranging the ship out I'll be able to deal with that later on okay so here we are on my base on uh, Neosoi and or Nisan? Nisoi? Uh, I don't know but all we need now is one of these types which you can build at your outpost and then we will need to go into the ship builder here so I want to view and modify ships and of course if you haven't figured it out there's a very specific reason I'm going for the razor leaf um, the, this is because the razor leaf has a special effect that all the other ships don't have which is the razor leaf terrifies your pirate enemies and can be used to scare the crap out of them so that is something I want and I am going to use so we will be having some of that right now from this jumbled mess we're gonna take a lot of this 
out and just move it around and I'm going to get all the pieces I need out together and sort of show you. Now there's a whole bunch of these like this bit here from the raised leaf I don't need and I can't actually remember if well I know I don't actually in the end need any of these engines but these are going to be tucked over here out the way because I may need them to go and get the Slayton engines later. So let me arrange all the other bits and get things ready. Okay, so here we've got basically stage one of the ship. So we've got the cockpit, we got these are the bits we got from Hope Tech. We have a Stroud Companionway, Science Lab, Workshop, Computer Core Control Station or Stroud, uh, Armory, Novatech. Now these can be any flavor you like. Um, I just happen to like these. I've got an all-in-one berth and a captain's quarters here. And you'll notice on the end of these, I have the aft porthole and four portholes for both of those. I've just attached those on there. These bits are bits left over from the raised leaf, which we might just use to get ourselves around to get some new engines. And here we have the slim docker from the razor leaf, which we will be reusing. There is in fact an armory on the razor leaf, which we I've not reused because it's not my favorite armory. And here I have a whole bunch of Stroud landing gears, which you can essentially flip around to be what you like. Um, and we have a Stroud docker, which we're going to start with. So the Stroud docker goes in there because I like a ship I can get in easily from the front. And because we have to make onto there, we've straight away got the companion way. And on to the bottom of that companion way before we forget is going to go our docking bay. On the opposite side of that we are going to chuck one of this way round the, the landing gear and then on the bottom of that we're going to put one of the Hope Tech spines and then I put the armory here with the two hallways either side then I put those landing gears in there to add and these then I'll put all in one berth this side like that and just a tip here if you double click on it it'll select everything attached to it and this is very useful for finding errors when it says not everything is attached so later on if it says to you you've got the ship and not everything is attached double click and it'll highlight everything that is attached so you can have a look at that because sometimes you do get some little freakiness so at this point we have basically our lower deck sorted so if you come in you can go down this way into the armory and out to the captain's quarters and all in one berth as you see at the moment we've got a max four crew here we're going to add the other spine and then in no particular order but I particularly like this order workshop science lab control stations and computer core so here I put another landing gear again you don't have to put all landing gears you can get away with doing things slightly differently um, for example you can put the cargo in and then put the landing gear in it depends how you want to mirror things out and if we end up with a weight problem later which is always possible so I tend to slap more than enough landing gear in I tend to overkill it with landing gear they're not particularly heavy on mass and not particularly pricey 
so you're better off having them than not having them. So if I can just get the whole thing to zoom in enough so I can get that in. Yep, there we go. Now, the reactor is going to go here and the grav drive here. This bit is the most important bit because this is where we have to put this cargo bay here and then we can put another landing gear, landing gear and landing gear here. If we do not do this this way, um, this section becomes unattached. So it's very important to do that section that way. This one, we're going to flip around to here and get that one in. Now this is an optional. On top of this, you can put just a Stroud dummy section. Essentially, uh, if we go to structural, one of these or the Stroud equivalent, which is the one I tend to prefer. Um, can't spot it right now. There is a Stroud equivalent here. But um, in all honesty, I'm going to put one of these in, which I will flip around this way and I will actually use the engine later to attach it. Here I'm going to put two lots of fuel, so we've got an absolute oodle of fuel. And here we're going to stick in some, car some additional cargo, some shielded cargo right here and we have got space for additional cargo should we want it or additional fuel if we want it I mean we could if we flip this round you could even put that in there and then you can look at how you want to do things later on the moment we've got nearing 5,000 cargo and here is going to go that one and this one is going to go over here it doesn't attach at the moment but it will attach later because this is essentially stage one of the build because now we have to do what is essentially prettification most of what comes next is not actually functional so we need some Stroud engine mounts. These will go here. And we will copy that across and put one there. And that will allow this to then attach, I believe, it says. Oh no, it attaches to the engine, sorry. When we'll be doing that later then. Because when we get to that bit, we will be putting an engine on here, one of those big engines, and we'll attach this to the back of it as part of a landing support. But in the meantime, this can go there and we'll use it later. So again, we're going to look around here and there are specific parts I like but ultimately this is very much up to you and the styling you want we'll be needing a couple of these so we'll grab those now while I see them I'm looking for some very particular cowlings we're gonna want a couple of these cowlings which are going to go on here and we'll flip that around and put one on the other side as well there we go that seems good and I think we can even no not that one we'll delete that so over here you there's so many different cowling types what I'll do is I'll sort of get things together and then I'll show it to you. I prefer putting these here as well, copy those across 
and chuck that one in for looking like I have reverse thrust. Okay, so take me a bit of a while to do, but um, here we are. So basically we have Nova Cowlings down the side, full set here. We have the Stroud engine mount as I showed with Stroud Cowlings here and a Nova braking port. This is the Stroud braking engine which will be going at the front with the help of the, what I was looking for and couldn't find which is, which is the Stroud mid bracer which will go between the two Stroud end caps which are next to the large cowling three section cowling that you can get and that will slot on there like so. I have some Dimos stub wings in here and a Nova radiator just to make things look a bit cool and I believe that one should actually go there. This one will then tuck back here and eventually the engine will go underneath when this has been moved around. So here we can put whatever we like really to just cover it over. Um, this one will be taking a copy of this wing and putting that on that side. Now these little two stubbies for weapons mounts that we took off the razor leaf will be going in here there if we can just squeeze them on because we're gonna tuck a couple of weapons in there later on so there we go we just want those in there like that these are going to pop here and here and that is basically it, with the exception of something which I can't remember what it was that went over that little section there. It was not a Stroud mid bracer. It was not a tie out engine. It was probably another radiator or something of some description. I hate it when it does that. that we'll look at using. So I'll stick something in there. What I'll end up doing is temporarily mounting, for example, these engines, higgledy piggledy, somewhere onto this system. Like so. This will literally be a temporary measure in order to get the ship from A to B so I can pick up those other engines. I mean, this is pretty much superfluous, so I can probably get rid of it as long as I can find somewhere to mount that engine, which I can, so that one will go. So that will be essentially it, apart from what goes in that slot, which I will let you know. And the other thing we need to take an interest in which obviously we haven't touched at all at the moment, shields and weapons. So, shields, let's just get that out of the way for starters. Shields will be the Vanguard Bulwark Generator because while it may not be the best shield on the market, um, there are better ones later on at my particular level and at this particular point in the game for me this is simply the best shield around and that will be placed probably round about here I can place it a couple of other spots but yeah somewhere like that now other weapons so the other main weapons we'll be looking at will be We'll, we will be a very keen on using our favorite Vanguard obliterators, which will be here somewhere. Yep, yeah, they will be on here for sure. We'll have at least the maximum of those. Oh, come on. <sighs> Gotta love how crap this system is for positioning things. 
it really sort of seems to hate hate you when it comes to positioning things. You have to tap things out, and then there we go. And G, and we'll get the other one in if it like it. So that's four energy bars worth. Now we want five and six. Sorry, that's eight now. So we can afford two more of those. So we'll grab that. And you can pretty much mount them wherever you like. Um, I tend to mount them a bit further back. Normally there. And I'll copy one across to there. So that will be one in one weapon assignment. The other weapon assignment... Oh god. Oh god, game. You and the way you do this. See, it's, it's zooming me in constantly. It's very upsetting. So there's the Vanguard Ares Particle Cannon. This is actually more powerful than the Obliterator's Bang for Buck. Slight, about the same range and a slightly lesser firing firing rate. But I think mathematically they're on a par, if not a little more powerful. It's hard to say. But essentially these are your next weapon of choice, which we now have to position out. Come on. Which I tend to put here. These we only have four of because it's three, three, and three. So let's have another one here and another one here. And then the other favorite weapon for me is either a turret or I've actually grown to quite like the Vanguard Missile Launcher, which has a max power of six, so you can only have two of these on your ship. And previously, I did find they tucked into there, but they don't want to do it today. So we could put them there, or we can simply under-sling them, which I also like to do here, because I think that looks kind of cool to stick them there and there and it makes the ship not look like it's completely bristling with weapons it kind of hides a lot of the weapons and makes it fit makes me feel like it's a bit of a silent killer but that will make it extremely strong so unassigned weapons so we can obviously sort that out that's nice and easy so we want, I'm going to put the obliterators on the first one, the Ares on the second one, and the missiles on the third. Okay, then we've got one more, one more warning, which is low mobility. Well, that we know about because we've got a bit of a lacking mess. The other thing you can do, I mean, one of the things I've done with the weapons previously as well is to actually chuck them up there and have some turrets or something up there. I quite like these, they give you extra mounts. The only thing I need to find is something to go in there. I can just copy these for now, um, but I'm sure I had something else there before. But I kind of like that look anyway. So we'll just go with like that. And that is basically the ship done by the engines so we're gonna now go and do the engines and we are now up to a maximum crew of seven and as you see that's cost us a total of 243 plus what we've already paid but we are gonna have a big payment in a minute on engines so we're now back to Hope Town and ready to load up 
with our newfound engines. Oh, wonderful. Okay, no problem. I'm forever pressing the wrong buttons. Ship builder, there we go. Right. So this comes off. I mean, though this engine isn't actually a terrible engine, truth be known. Um, it's one of the better parts of the Razor Leaf. But the Slayton engines are just so good. Oops, there we go. Yes, please. So the Slayton engines are just fantastic. So we're going to move this out of the way as well. So we have an empty slot in here as well, where we will be able to slot even more cargo if we want, depending on what we're after. I mean, I'm happy to slot more cargo in there, like that. Um, but you can slot other things in there if you wish. The only thing it does hit is it kind of gives you a hit on jump range because of the weight. So the way around that is if you want that area populated, you can just put one of these Stroud midsections in. I'm not going to be able to copy it. And that will leave us better off. But as is, 25 will be plenty. We will get upgrades and we can easily access them to swap them out. So that's all, all easy. So let's go and find these engines and the engines we are looking for I mean, even these slayton engines are pretty good but these just have crazy maneuvering thrust on these they're expensive as hell but they have really good maneuvering thrust compared to the other options. So let's bring that one down there. Come on. There we go. Yep. And we will simply copy. Copy. But this gets expensive fast. And this will basically wipe us out at this point. So it's quite an expensive ship to build if you put all the engines on there but you will have 100% mobility. And even if we take that engine away, you're still at 96. So you could feasibly do something like that and put a different engine in there, if that's what floats your boat, to give yourself some different options. But in all honesty, I just like the look of the Slayton engines as well. So in they will go. And I mean, obviously, as you see, that has again hit our jump range down to 21. We will be able to get things with much greater jump thrust later on. And I, in fact, if I remember rightly, it says going here, if you actually have a look at the available grav drives at this sort of level I believe even one of these has slightly more thrust this one's 36 over this one which is 34 and then we're gonna get rid of these parts because we're gonna sell those we don't want them and we're done we are all hooked up with probably as powerful as we're ever going to need. We haven't got max engines, but we just really don't need it. And that's the ship. And I have renamed it to Razor Fang because, I don't know, I think that sounds better. And this is going to be quite the ship. So we'll have a quick tour of the ship before we get on to running a really fast mission in which we'll have to do some fighting just to sort of show this off so in we go this should be a completely ladderless build so in we go here this will take us directly into our armory where we have two mannequins and basic boxes and containers 
this way brings us to the captain's quarters which is all very nice lovely and over on the other side here we have the all-in-one crew berth with a galley should be a galley yep yeah. here if we need it and a scary looking andresia and that's it for basically the downstairs area this takes you into the cockpit which lets you go up this way and we can now look at also we probably won't change the suit out but you know I kind of feel like we're taking on the mantle of the mantis pretty strongly I might put that one on but you know we're essentially becoming the mantis as the end of our career why, why have we got all this Z fighting going on I feel like it's like I've got two cockpits here because something isn't right because that is blocked which should yes we have a bit of an issue going on here so I'm going to reload because we seem to have some weird Zeb fighting going on and uh, hopefully that will be fine okay we've reloaded the Zeb fighting seems to have stopped and I think we're basically fixed or we should be oh I've forgotten something I've forgotten something whoopsie so there was one piece I thought was superfluous and I've forgotten something so if you've gotten this far in the video bonus moment for you to help you fix a problem I have clearly hey, cocked up what can I do? Sure. How about it? right so underneath here we're going to need to go shipbuild our second underneath here there is a gap where we put this one which actually was shielded cargo which was where we're going to take this one back out I mean, fortunately it was only 8,000 so I won't feel too bad about deleting it this one on the other builds went in there and this engine went there so problem solved there and here we need to put in the one thing I have forgotten which is another one of these hopefully we can get one nope we're gonna have to use someone else's normally I would use a Stroud companion way but we apparently don't have a Stroud companion way available here at Hope Town so I will use another one it's not the end of the world so if we go to Habs come Habs come here yes um, there we go oh. there we go we'll slap in the hope tech companion way and that will do the job and this one can go in on top and jobs a good one and we actually make money out of that which is good because we only have 23,000 credits left after all that fun and games so that should fix the problem we had there I'd forgotten to put the companion way in on the upper level which is what allows us to get to all the rooms on the upper level so here we go thank you companion way now added now we can open both these and here we have all the sort of computer desks for your crew along with a computer core for your crew and on the other side we'll, we have weapons bench industrial bench spacesuit workbench research lab and back here we have again another research station and a pharmaceutical lab so that should be every single crafting bench that's available for you 
along with significant firepower. Now what we're going to do to finish things off is firstly we're going to take off into space and sort out our loadout. And it looks fairly mean taking off and in all honesty with all that thrust it's pretty maneuverable. Orbital insertion done. Time However, to dance among the stars. The more interesting thing is what I'll end up doing is trimming this out and I will almost certainly trim down the missiles to probably just like three and that's to keep them as a backup weapon. I'm probably going to trim the shields down and the engines down a bit and put the rest of that here into those. So that will then give us all of these, all of the others as well to really ram home and we can start hammering missiles out like a crazy nutter. So we can do a lot of damage with this in a short period of time. Even with shields 83 we've got pretty mad shielding. I mean with our buffs we're up to 2000 shields at maximum setup. So we're looking pretty tidy. The only other thing I didn't do which I should have done during the build is put this to get some better versions of some of the other parts. But there will be other upgrades available later like grav drives and the like. But for now, we're going to go to Lopez Farm and use that as a way to test things out. Landing gear is ready. Sight is clear. So here we are coming in on Lopez Farms. Where this should be a fairly easy quest for us. This time round. I'm not afraid to use this to defend my home and my family. But you sure as hell don't look like any spacer I've seen before. Is it the UC gear that I that gave it away? Or the ship? Anyway, your broadcast made you seem like you you needed help. So let me get this straight. You heard a distress call and you flew all the way down here. What are you, some sort of priest or good Samaritan? I didn't know people like you were real, but I got a heap load of problems. And I'm willing to pay my share for the help. Well, I'm the Mantis, and I'm happy to help. I don't know what game you're playing, but I guess I'm in. Used to be four families that list help set up stakes in this system. We rarely saw eye to eye in the best of times, and believe me true, these ain't the best of times. Spacers started raiding and it's been getting worse. Only a matter of time before they end us all. <laughs> Unless you're willing to help some hard-working, pig-headed settlers out. If you're trying to convince me that my fellow man is a bitter disappointment, believe me, I'm way ahead of you. Well, look, spacers are a plague on the settled systems and I'm here to get rid of them. No arguments here. The spacers have taken out the family's list satellites, so we can't even talk to each other. Isolate and eliminate a classic tale. You fix the Lopez satellite, and I'll open a secure channel, and we can sync up and get the lay of the land, and then get all of our satellites operational. Okay, let's get to work. It might be I'm getting caught up in the moment, but I actually feel <laughs> optimistic for once. Thanks. No worries. My pleasure to help, sir. Right, let's get our asses back to orbit. And here's our first set of spacers to sort out. Which will be fun. Oh, hello. Where are you? There you are. Let's, uh, let rip on this guy. Yep. <laughs> okay. He's kind of done. There we go. Now he's in range. I mean... Okay, and this guy, yeah, as you can see, 
even on very difficult. Um, this absolutely is kicks which ass. Means communications is up. Sending the data on the other satellites. You do hear me, right? Hello? No, don't hear you at all. Sorry. Blur, Wait, blur, what? blur. Can't hear you, mate. No. Hardy, ha, ha. It's going to take some time dealing with someone competent. I don't suppose you want a job working hydroponics. No one ever says yes to that. <laughs> Once you repair the other satellites, I'll open a channel to the other families. I think my skills are kind of wasted in hydroponics, my man. Um, as you can see as well, additional to that was that our actual power setup was not as we would like it to be. Okay, we're at the next satellite. And there you go, we've got them already screaming that I am the Mantis. And again, why have my freaking things changed? My power setup has changed yet again. Which seems to be something that's happening more with the latest update, so God knows why. But these guys are not standing a chance, even with a fairly basic setup here, where I would generally take a little bit more off, put a bit there, and have it set up a bit like that. Until I have more power, of course, which will come with later grav drives and more astro astronomics or whatever it is. Okay, so here we come, approaching the next satellite. Expect for bad guys to jump in. At least this time we are set up how I would like the power more set up. So we should be able to make the most of it. I mean, again, you, I am low on speed. If I had more power pips, I would be spreading that around a bit more. But, you know, it is what it is. Excellent. And I'll patch in. Lopez to win? Lopez to win. Win? Win! This does not sound good. Win, please! Win may be the three families now. I hope the other families are okay. And the sooner we make contact with them, the better. Okay, so now full test. Let's go. Go on, get down, and I can, if I can get a lock, I can actually use the missiles, which we could use just to wipe them out as well. And there we go. So it doesn't take long. To deal with some basic spacers. I mean, we could probably take on one of the legendary ships as well. I've not tried that. We might have a go at that in a minute as a final thing because we won't complete this quest fully. I think most of us probably know how it goes. So, here we go. Looks like I've found here. What's this? Dimos Arm Armored Transport. Okay. There's a couple of Crimson Fleet here. This is a different ship. I thought this was the actual... Um, I thought this might be one of the legendaries, but it's not, sadly. So I haven't found one, but as you can see, the ship's pretty decent. It will hold up against a lot of things. What we'll do is we'll jump to Crix just to sort of see if we can demonstrate how well it does considering this is very hard we might have to jump out because there will be a lot of ships here at Crix but our plan for our future days are now to basically kick the ass of the pirates, ecliptic, spacers and alike. Oh, someone is already attacking me. Let's uh, get the freak out. 
Okay. Wow, there are a lot of ships here already. Oh. Alright, let's uh, get a lock on that one. Oh, that is going to be a bit rough. Because, yep. Yeah. Okay. We may not be quite ready for this on hard mode. That hit knocked out our grab drive. They've disabled the grab drive. Yeah, yeah. Direct hit to the grab jump. It's offline. Weapons. <laughs> 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 okay, it can't stand up to Crix. Crix is a bit tough. At this moment in time. Might be a bit biting off a bit more than I can chew right there. Um if I stick reverse in, I might actually um, manage it because if I can go full reverse, I might be able to do sufficient damage. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Because, yeah, you got to sort of get them on the run. And if you can get it right, you can do it. But Crix is a little bit tough. Oh, look. They're very grumpy. They know I'm the Mantis. Holy shit, there's a lot of them there. Yeah. He's got the same flavor engine as us. Yeah, but we're not doing terrible considering. We're actually doing alright. Oh, uh, come on, come on. Give me that ship. Give me targeting. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I missed the repair. We have no shields. We have very little engine. Yeah, but that's all right. That's all right. We're not doing terrible. Shields are not response. Weapons. Yep, and we have actually now cooked all our um, weapons parts, which could be a problem. <laughs> but I think it's time to back off on Cricks there. As yes, it was really a demonstration of. Um, how far how far we can go and we're not even fully buffed up so we could do better and I think it would be a good time to jump away so let's just set a course for random planet Q and what we can do is go random planet random jump and get the hell out before we get too toasted. So we get to live f to fight another day. But with that, I'm gonna say, oh my lord, more spacers. Um, my good man here decides to take on a new life, putting constellation to one side and take up the mantle of the mantis trying to do good for everyone in space and trying to make the world as better place as you can and defend the artifacts but with that I'm going to say thank you very much for watching like and subscribe as always and join us again next time thanks a lot